Today on the all wheel drive Civic Type R, we are gonna continue on with the fuel system. So yesterday we got all the fuel pump wiring done. We got lines ran to kind of the front of the car. We still need to secure them to the body underneath. I need to get the injectors installed, new fuel rail installed, regulator installed, all the lines in here built. We have the flex fuel sensor somewhere in here to install. Here she is. We got that to install. I need to go ahead and get our Haltech map sensor on. So, without further ado, welcome back to the channel. Let's get moving on some fuel system. I only had one of these little clamp separator things here at the shop. I'm gonna buy a few more of these and then I'm gonna screw these right to the bottom of the car to hold the fuel lines up nice and tight and it's gonna look clean. So we got it on from the tanks to right here. Let's go clean it up in the bay. Lines run up. They're gonna run on the bottom side of the rail. Feed's gonna split off and come right to the fuel rail right here. So let's trim her up. We have a different fuel rail to install and at the same time we have the injectors to install. A little bit of a setback, the FIC 1650s that we're installing have a different plug-in than what is on our K-Tune harness. So we do need to go ahead and swap out the injector pigtails. We can take care of that when those come in. Tried a bunch of different locations for both the regulator and the flex fuel sensor. Here's what I ended up with. Fuel comes in through the rail. It's gonna come out into the flex fuel sensor. We're gonna have a line that runs way back there on the firewall, comes in the regulator, and then it's gonna dump out the bottom of the regulator right to that line right there. So as of right now, all fuel system related stuff, of course, besides the pigtails for the FIC 1650s, everything's finished up. It's all plumbed all the way from the cells up to the rail, goes through the rail, through our flex fuel sensor. The hose runs on the bottom side of the cowl, comes down, goes into the regulator. That's how we adjust the fuel pressure. And then it dumps out the bottom and goes back to the cells. Nice and clean, simple setup. We have plenty of slack here. We can move this guy wherever we need. Of course, we have an intercooler piping that's gonna go there. Probably the couch can's gonna go somewhere down there. It's all finished up and it looks very good. So I am pleased. Next thing that we need to do is get a throttle pedal fully installed in the car. So I need to build some sort of bracket for this guy. This is out of a 350Z. The car's already wired. Everything's good to go. It's calibrated for this drive-by wire throttle pedal and the throttle body. Go check out yesterday's video if you don't know what I'm talking about. So she needs to sit something like this. All right, here's my mount. 
trust the process. Throttle pedal mount is all finished up and it mounts like this. All pedals are installed. I did have to modify the throttle pedal a little bit. By modify, I mean bend. It's in a really good spot. I feel like it's a little bit lower than factory would be, but if that bugs me in the future, I can fix it. No, I think it's perfect. I went to go throw away the box for the injectors and in this little guy right here, like that, there goes. Let's go ahead and get these guys swapped on to the K-Tune harness. Injectors are sorted out. The next system I'm gonna tackle is the cooling system. So the first thing that we have is this K-tuned little, little thingy-mabobber, all right? This guy is gonna sit right up in there. And then this hose is gonna go like this, underneath the intake manifold and connect way back there. All right, we got all that installed. Next up is this hose that is a, I guess you'd call it a heater core, kind of a heater core hose. So that goes to the heater core and then that goes down to the water pump housing. I put our pipe on the car and then took it back off because no one likes a janky pipe. I'm gonna grind that little guy off there. And then there's this nipple right here that would usually run back to the throttle body. But of course we do not need that. So I'm gonna cut it off, weld it, grind it smooth. And then we need to, I'll probably just paint this piece. I don't feel like getting out the powder coat setup just for this. Gave it a quick little sandblast. I'm gonna spray it with this 500 degree engine enamel. As we are waiting on Mr. Rattlekin over here to dry, Let's move on to the next part of the cooling system, which is going to be the radiator. As you can see, we have a dash 16 fitting there, dash 16 fitting up here, and on our factory radiator, it's plastic, so we cannot weld any AN fittings to that guy. So what I picked up is this. Hopefully a full aluminum radiator made for an FK8, so it's gonna mount right to our factory, where the factory one's gonna go. The stock fan should go right onto here, and if all goes well, we should be able to weld our AN bungs onto here, build some Dash 16 radiator hoses, and that'll solve that problem. We got everything plugged off in there, so we need to go lop those off for a traditional radiator hose and install or weld these on. Hopefully my aluminum welding skills are, are top notch today. Bug number one, installed. Bug number two, installed. Let's get her welded up. Now it's not the most beautiful welding in the world, but it's definitely my best aluminum welding. Very pleased with it. Before I call this a wrap, 
I'm gonna go ahead and pressure test it. All right, we got seven PSI in there. All right, that one's good. And look at that, no leaks. No leaks. First successful weld job we don't have to patch with our TIG. Great success. Let's go ahead and get this radiator onto the core support, get the fans on, get everything situated, and then we can start messing around with building the Dash 16 radiator hoses. Not only did we need the radiator, the aluminum radiator for the bungs, but look how much bigger that radiator is compared to this guy. It's like twice as thick. So we should be able to run much cooler in this hot summer. I believe for the first time ever, the entire front core support is on and we can finally look at clearance. And I'm already seeing a little issue, which should be easy resolution. There's two, two resolutions. Pull a spacer out or leave the spacer in because it's cool and it's effective. And we take this line and we just go all the way straight down with it, which is probably what I'll do. But now let's go ahead and build our radiator hoses. So top one is gonna go from this port right here to there. Nice, simple, straight shot. Bottom one's gonna go from right there all the way to over here. Can't quite finish the upper hose. I need two straights. All I have is a bunch of 45s, but I can do the lower with a 90 and a 45 off the housing. Our rattle can pipe is finally kind of dry. It's a little bit sticky, but I'm sick of waiting. So this is gonna go on the car. And then that's pretty much all we can do for cooling system stuff. What I'm hoping that we can do for the heater core hoses is retain the factory FK8 radiator or the heater core hoses. So let's get this guy on and deal with that. And then we can plumb some other stuff. Little coolant crossover pipe is installed and the factory heater core hoses do indeed work. It's a very, very, very tight fit. With the manifold here, I need to pick up some heat protectant for those hoses for sure because they're pretty much gonna run in between the manifold and the downpipe. So heat protectant has gotta be on there. Check this out, I bought a little filter. I don't wanna build an intake for this thing and that looks very, very nice. So that is gonna be our filter. Just built myself a nice little turbo return line. I bought a bat, I'm dumb. I bought a oil feed line, it is too short so we cannot complete that oiling system. But I'm sitting here looking at the car and I'm realizing how close we could be to a first start. So I'm gonna attempt a first start. In order to fire this car up, all we're gonna need is fluids. So I'm gonna throw in engine oil, I'm gonna fill the trans, I'm gonna fill the T case, not the D case, that's filled with the trans, not a Evo. We're gonna need a map sensor, and hypothetically speaking, I think that should be all we need, and fuel to fire this car up. So the map sensor that we're installing is a Haltec 4 bar. It needs to be repinned. This guy right here. It's a different connector versus what the factory Honda would use. This uses a douche DTM 3 pin connector. So I need to go ahead and get the connector swapped out. I found pinouts of how that one should be wired and how the factory one is wired. And it's actually different. So I'm gonna make sure I get this pinned properly, get that guy on, and then from there, we should be able to throw fluids in it, and I don't know if it's gonna start or not, but we can try. That's all that matters, is I wanna try. It'll be fun.
Okay, I'm gonna go through and test each system individually. So I put oil in the engine. I'm gonna go through and crank it over. There's no fuel with the car right now, so it's not gonna start. And then as soon as we get some oil moving around, make sure we don't have any crazy leaks. I'll throw a little bit of fuel in it, prime the fuel system, make sure we don't have any leaks there. And then I'll just say screw it and see if we can fire it up. I do need to hold the turbo from spinning because we do not have a turbo feed line. Don't, uh, don't judge my uh, starting method. She sounds a little crusty. Our main power wire had a 60 amp fuse in it, which I feel is a little bit low and it popped that right off the bat. So I put a bolt in there, a thousand amp fuse. Try this again. Where's my starter wire? Here she is. Oops. All right, we got some fuel in her. It seems like when I wanna put a, like dump fuel in it, it Something weird with the vent system is going on, I think, because it just wants to shit it, shit it right back out on my face. I don't know if that's enough fuel, but I hope it is. And my fuel cell is not leaking, so that's cool. We got pressure and we got a big leak because I'm dumb and I don't tighten lines. So let's tighten my line. And then we got fuel. All right, let's try again. We have fuel, we might have compression. I have no idea if we have spark. I'm gonna skip checking spark and I'm just gonna go straight for a first start. If we don't have spark, of course it's not gonna start. And if it doesn't start, then I'll check it. Yeah, let's just try to start it for fun. So every time I go to start the car, it's pulling so much power and killing the ECU. And I think the reason for it is because the main power wire is powering both the ECU and the starter so i'm wondering if they have to be on separate power wires i feel like that's what's going on because as soon as i try to crank the car it kills the ecu and there's plenty the battery does have plenty of voltage so that's not the problem little update if i try to start the car like you would typically start a car by just the start button instead of trying to do what i was doing before it's not cutting power to the ecu right away but it's still hardly turning over so Definitely sounds a little bit slow to me. I don't know if it's a low voltage issue as it's cranking. I have really no way to measure it by myself, I don't think. Or this motor is just very, very, very tight. All right, let's check voltage while cranking on the battery. I'm gonna set the camera up and I'm gonna crank it. And then I'm gonna watch the camera footage and see what it drops to. It should, if I'm not mistaken, it shouldn't go anything below 10. I was able to jump back here as it was cranking and I saw like 11 plus volts, so I think that's good there. Now what I'm wondering if maybe our power wire going to the starter is too small. So I'm gonna try the same concept up front and see what the voltage is at the starter as it's cranking. And I just realized I was very zoomed in, I apologize. Well boys, we are losing like five volts somehow from the from the battery up to the starter, and it should not lose, as far as I know, many at all, many volts at all. So I think we got a problem in our starter wire. Well, boys, I need to rethink and reconstrue my whole uh, powering system. I think I'm gonna redo how I have everything right now and kind of just go back to how it would be in a factory sense. So how it is factory is 12 volts comes in right here and then 12 volts comes out right here, right to the starter. I think that's how I'm gonna set this car up, just to ensure that, of course, we do not want this crazy low voltage drop. The only other option would be to run the power wire, the 12 volt wire right to the starter, and then tee off of that, go to the fuse box. But I think how it's set up factory is probably the best bet. So, this thing's never gonna start, obviously on seven or eight volts. I think I'm gonna wrap up the video right here. I need to get more power wire because of course mine is now cut way too short. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out my good friends. We're getting close. 
at least it's cranking with enough voltage it's going to sound like it wants to start and then there may be a few other little things to tweak for a first start hope you enjoyed peace out and i'll see you boys in the next one